The live reef fish trade is an international trade in reef fishes and these fishes are kept alive after capture and they are transported internationally, mainly to markets in Hong Kong and mainland China. And as consumers, we would see these fish swimming around in tanks outside of restaurants, um, sometimes in the hotels, sometimes in the wet markets. Uh, and these are ready for customers to select and then they are cooked immediately to be very fresh. The fish are coming from the reefs of Indonesia and the Philippines. And they're mainly made up of the groupers, which are most of the species involved. And we may have a few other reef fishes like the Napoleon wrasse, for example. And these species, there's probably about 10 or 15 of them involved in the trade. And many of them are very attractive. Uh, they are very pretty. Uh, consumers like to see these attractive animals. Red color is uh, particularly uh, valued. And they sell for very high prices as part of a luxury seafood market, uh, particularly to, to Chinese restaurants, seafood restaurants. Uh, our problem is about the government because we don't have certain regulation about the library fish trade. For example, if you catch the fish from uh, wild and then you put in a cage for one or two hours and they already moved to aquaculture fish, not capture fisheries anymore. So the separation between wild fish and aquaculture fish is not clear in government regulation. regulation number 37 year 2013 is only allowing to be export when the size is between one kilogram to three kilogram only under one kilogram or above three kilogram is not allowed to be exported and as a result of this high demand the populations of the fish has been going down over time so the response from the conservation community has been that the species is now listed on CITES, Appendix 2, and that's an, uh, an international convention to help to conserve fish which are in international trade. Now for the Napoleon fish, those levels are something like 2,000 fish every year can be exported from Indonesia. So that's not that many fish. So there's quite a tightly controlled trade in this fish to make sure that the populations can be sustained on the one hand, but the trade can continue. In one case, people are talking about if you have successful story in aquaculture fish, that means you can replace the wild fish. You save the environment, you save the population. But actually, uh, the reality is not like that. Aquaculture fish just make a new market for them. This is the big problem in Indonesia. Because in aquaculture, we don't need to talk about the environment, about the minimum size, for example. We don't need to talk about how the fishermen catch the fish, because all already become aquaculture fish. So this is a big problem for us and we don't know how the government will change and when because I was already waiting for 20 years and still not changing. Within the live reef fish trade, people are talking about destructive fishing. Cyanide and hook and line is for live reef fish trade. They put the cyanide solution to the reef and make the fish a bit sleepy. And then uh, fishermen can catch them easier and they can take more number of fish. These are fish coming out of Indonesia on boats illegally, coming into Hong Kong 
on boats by air illegally and also going over the border between Hong Kong and mainland China being smuggled regularly over the border illegally. So this is a highly organized black market. In general, we need a total commitment from all global leadership to work together to protect my oceans, your oceans, our oceans. What we've learned is that to control this trade and to have something that's really sustainable so that everyone can have a piece of the pie, we need to control right from the very beginning, from the fishery itself, the government in the source country, the transit network, so that's by air or by sea, importers and the government control over those imports, smuggling over the border to mainland China, the traders themselves, um, and also consumers. Um, hopefully in the future, consumers will have the option to have sustainably traded, sustainably sourced live reef fish. And that's what we would really like to see. Every piece of that trade chain operating properly and effectively.